Hey everyone, my name is Lucas and I just shot my first wedding uh, last weekend and so I thought I'd share with you some of the things I learned, the top 10 tips I've learned. There's a lot more to learn, but uh, here's 10 of them. Okay, number one, uh, do a lot of research. Do what you're doing right now. Watch this video. Go and look at all of the blogs that there's so many great wedding photographers out there right now that have great blogs and, and show their photos and see what makes them successful. And so inundate yourself with that information. And number two is uh, poses. Uh, and that goes along with, with number one is, is see and find poses that you like because when it comes time to do the portrait session and you're stressed out and sweating and uh, nervous, uh, you, you're gonna wanna have a couple poses locked in your mind that you know you wanna get and, uh, and fall back on. And that goes into number three. Number three is be positive. When you're posing them and working with them and trying to take pictures of them, always encourage what they're doing. Tell them they look great because they do. It's their wedding day. They're gonna look great. And um, you're gonna be stressed out and probably not getting things dialed in just right. And your natural reaction is in your head is, is to say in your head, oh, I'm screwing up, this doesn't look good. And that, if you're in a habit of it, that might actually come out of your mouth when you're shooting them and you don't want that to happen. So a good thing to start practicing is when you totally screw up, say that looks awesome um, and let's try something else. And so that you, if you're in the habit, if you're doing self portraits now, testing, uh, you know, trying to figure out your camera, you're probably in the habit of saying to yourself, oh, this doesn't look good. Well, you don't want that, that to accidentally come out when you're shooting, um, this couple so stay positive say positive things even when you're screwing up the beauty of of photographing them is that unless you show them the back of your camera they don't know what it looked like so when you tell them it looks great that's what they think and they're gonna get more comfortable with you and you're gonna get a great response from them number four practice a lot I my first wedding was outside and so just in turning you know in my 180 degrees view there were a lot of different exposures and so when you're shooting and you're um, trying to get your camera dialed in and and get capture those moments you've got to be really dialed into your camera so i would suggest going outside and practicing on a day like today you know over here is uh, a lot brighter than than the shade and so practicing just quickly going back and forth getting your exposures uh, uh, and, and dialing that in. And so practice a lot because you don't want to have to be fumbling around with your camera uh, during the ceremony and, and missing that because the ceremony only lasts 10, 15 minutes and you've got to get 100 good pictures at least, you know, so 200, I don't know. So you, get, you don't want to have to be worrying about your camera, so practice now. Number five is shoot a lot. Shoot more than you think you should your camera should be pushed up against your face all day. You should constantly be taking photos. There's always something to take a photograph of or looking to, to be prepared to take a photograph when something happens. You really need to shoot a lot because each person that's included in a picture is another pair of eyes that are gonna blink. It's another face that is gonna have an expression that you may or may not want. So each person that you add to a photograph means that's that many more variables that you have got to be taking a ton of pictures of that scenario to capture that one moment that is is what you want to get and so take a ton of photographs take way more than you think you are going to have to and that's another good reason for this uh, i'll talk about later this battery grip i would get a vertical grip uh, so you don't have to worry about your batteries and you can take a ton of photographs number six okay when you've got a shot move on I was, you know, nervous on my the first wedding I did this last weekend, and I overshot a lot of scenarios, a lot of situations because I wanted to make sure I got the expression I wanted and I got the exposure right. And so I would just it's just like beating a dead horse. I would take photographs of this one thing over and over. And so that's something to watch out for because you are going to be nervous and you're going to, you're going to want to make sure you get that shot and, you, and do that, but also know when you have it to move on to something else. That goes into number seven. Number seven is get reactions. Don't just shoot the subject. Look around. After you know you've got that shot, look around and get the reactions of people who are 
who are there in the situation, like the first look or the first dance, you know, see the parents, uh, you know, look around you and get reactions of people as well, because that's going to be a great uh, emotional uh, expression as well from them. This is just a quick tip. Number eight, don't move around so much during the first dance. That's what I was doing. I was trying to get all these different angles and, and, and do that maybe a little bit, but just know that when people are dancing, it's something very common that you don't really think about, but they're going to spin around. So I was spinning with them and got the same angle a bunch of times. So if you stay in one spot, they're going to spin around and uh, they're going to give you a bunch of different perspectives on them. So just think about that. Okay, number nine, this is a little more technical one. The back button focus. I didn't use it at all during my wedding, but I would suggest you start practicing with it now because what's gonna happen is, especially if you have a vertical grip, which the, the cheaper vertical grip, the shutter button is a little more sensitive. So when you go to, com to focus your subject and then recompose, you might accidentally hit the shutter button while you're focusing and give them a ton of headroom. And so if you use the back button focus on your camera, you can focus first without having to worry about hitting the shutter button and prematurely hitting, uh, taking a picture. So I would start practicing with that. It's not so important with landscape uh, shots, but definitely with portraits because you can get their head right in the middle of the photograph where your uh, focus might be. So. Just uh, think about that and practice because it's something, uh, and, you know, five hours into shooting a wedding, you're gonna also gonna get tired and so you can't accurately push the shutter button halfway down very sensitively when you get really tired and your arm is tired and, and you're stressed out. So think about using the back button focus um, in your wedding. Number 10, the last one. I would suggest to open your composition up a little bit. Don't frame things incredibly tight, especially if you're in an outdoor wedding because you aren't gonna get the horizon perfectly straight um, in every photograph. I mean, there's, there's times when you don't want it straight, obviously, but um, a lot of times you are. And so open up your composition a little bit. Don't get so tight on them because the horizon's gonna be off just a little bit and it's gonna annoy you later. And if you framed it really tight, you, then you can't rotate it and crop it. And the other thing, of course, is then uh, if you open it up a little bit, it gives you more room to crop later on. If there's something distracting in the image that you want to crop out, um, it'll give you more room to move around. Okay, one, two quick real things uh, equipment-wise that I wanted to talk about before I end the video. Those were the top 10 tips, and here are two more extra ones for you about equipment. Get a vertical grip. Uh, Luis Torres talks about it in one of his podcasts. You can get in the description of this uh, video and at my website. There's a link to it, but um, he talks about it. And it, people, it sounds silly, but people look to you and think big camera equals good photographer. And so at some point, you got to kind of play into that, and it'll give you the confidence and it'll give your audience the confidence to know that you are the photographer because there's going to be other people there with uh, you know, a 5D Mark II who's Uncle Bob or Aunt Jane, and uh, they're probably not gonna have a vertical grip. So it's just gonna step you up that much more. And it is very nice. I didn't change batteries, I think, the whole day. Um, and I took 3,000 photographs. So it is a very nice addition. The other thing, of course, is the, this rapid strap. It will uh, save your neck, and it is very nice that it doesn't get caught and move around very much. I would highly recommend this, especially combined with this. Um, again, Luis Torres has talks about it. Go check out his podcast for weddingphotographers.com. Um, but I would highly suggest this, these two pieces of gear uh, for your first wedding. It will uh, make you stand out, give people confidence in your ability, and you'll be more comfortable. All right, that's the top 10 tips I have for first time wedding photographers. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and uh, also check out my website, lucasridley.com and uh, let me know you enjoyed this and uh, you wanna see more of it and I'll try to do that. And good luck to you in your first wedding and uh, let me know how it goes. Good luck.